oxides across period three. In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of the period three oxides. We're going to look in detail at their acid base nature, and we're going to justify those properties in terms of the actual equations of these compounds when they react with water. So our period three elements are given down here. We go from sodium to magnesium to aluminium, to silicon to phosphorus to sulfur to chlorine. You'll notice we only go up to group 17 and not to the noble gases. That's because our noble gases aren't going to form oxides. So when we're thinking about our period three oxides, we're only thinking about between group one and group 17. You should also notice that in some of these cases, we have multiple stable oxides. So sodium, magnesium, aluminium, and silicon only have one stable oxide. In the sodium case, that's Na2O, and you can see the other oxides here. However, for phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, there are multiple stable oxides that can form with different ratios of the period three element and oxygen. And it should be clear, an oxide of a specific element is just a pure compound made up of that element and oxygen only. Okay, so thinking about the reactions of these period three oxides with water, we can sort of group them. So the first two are sodium, the first two elements in period three are sodium and magnesium. So these, these are both examples of metals. So we had described sodium oxide and magnesium oxide as being metal oxides. And one thing we can say generally is that when metal oxides react with water, they form metal hydroxides. So you can see here we are forming sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2. And one thing we can pretty much always say about hydroxides in solution is these are basic. So that's going to mean that pH is above 7. That's our neutrality point, so anything above is going to be alkaline or basic. Moving over to some other constituents of period 3, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, these are examples of non-metal oxides. Phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine are all examples of non-metals. And what we find is that these tend to form acidic solutions when they react with water. So in the case of phosphorus oxide, P2O5, reacting with water, we make H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid. When we're reacting sulfur trioxide with water, we make sulfuric acid. And when we react chlorine oxide with H2O, we make chloric acid. All of these reactions produce things that we recognize as acids that are able to release H plus ions into solution when in water, so these are all acidic meaning we have a pH that is less than 7 in this case. You'll notice we skipped kind of a bit in the middle. We jumped from sodium and magnesium to phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, and that's because the two elements in between those groups are silicon and aluminium, and they have a slightly more nuanced reaction with water. So first of all, we find that both silicon dioxide and aluminium oxide, also known as alumina, don't actually readily react with water because they're so poorly soluble. It's hard for a solid to react with water if it isn't able to dissolve into that solvent. So in the presence of neutral water, these species don't react. However, silicon dioxide is generally considered to be acidic. The reason being, if you put it into alkaline solution, it is able to neutralize that solution. So here we have silicon dioxide, that's reacting with sodium hydroxide, which we know is a base, so that's going to make for an alkaline solution. And the end result is neutrality. We get Na2SiO3, that's just a neutral salt, and water. So if we have to class silicon dioxide as being acidic or basic, we're going to say that it's acidic. So again, we got pH less than 7. Alumina is even more tricky because Again, it doesn't dissolve in water. However, it will actually neutralize both acids and bases. So we can see here alumina reacting with HCl, hydrochloric acid, is able to neutralize that solution and produce a salt and water. That means that it's acting as a base because it's able to neutralize an acid. On the other hand, when you react alumina with a base, sodium hydroxide, in the presence of water, we again make a neutral salt. You may see that this is a hydroxide, so you may think, oh, actually, this should be basic. However, since the aluminium and the OH minuses are actually covalently bonded together, those OH minuses aren't released into the solution, so the solution remains neutral. So we could say alumina is both an, a base and an acid, 
which is why we use this term amphoteric. Okay, summing up our properties of these period three oxides, these first three columns give some indication of their kind of physical structure. So we find that sodium oxide all the way to phosphorus oxide are all solids at room temperature. However, sulfur dioxide is a gas, sulfur trioxide is liquid, Cl2O is a gas and Cl2O7 is a liquid. So we're gonna see that in general, our melting and boiling point is decreasing as we move from left to right. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium oxide are all examples of ionic compounds. Silicon dioxide is slightly unusual in that it's actually a covalent macromolecule. What that means is you have a repeating lattice of covalent bonds, and that's actually the reason that it's so insoluble in water, but we'll talk more about that structure in topic four. And then we find that all of the remaining oxides are simple covalent structures, meaning that they're simple molecules made up of covalent bonds. This structural information gives rise to their electrical properties, so when you melt these species, your ionic compounds become good conductors. That's something we know generally about ionic compounds. Silicon dioxide has very poor electronic conductivity. And these simple molecules have virtually no electronic conductivity whatsoever. These last two lines are just summing up what we've learned already. They have the products of the reaction of these species with water. You see that there's no reaction between aluminium and silicon oxide with water because those are so insoluble. In the case of sodium and magnesium, we're making hydroxides. In the case of phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, we're making various acids. So what that means is in terms of the nature, we move from basic to amphoteric to acidic as we move across the period three oxides. In terms of key points to take home, we saw that by looking at the reaction of period three oxides with water, and in the cases where our species were very insoluble, by looking at their reactions with acidic and alkaline solutions, we could justify the acid-base nature as we move across period three. And in general, we saw that we went from basic through amphoteric to acidic as we move from left to right. The odd ones out being these semi-metallic oxides, which don't readily react with water, but can react with acid and alkaline. For that reason, we saw that silicon dioxide was considered an acid and alumina, aluminium oxide, was considered amphoteric.